I in Aining sits with the CEO of Ghana Library, Mr. Hayford Sian, to talk about the reading culture of Ghanaian youth as well as some projects the Ghana Library Authority is embarking on to reach more people and encourage reading culture amongst the youth. Irene Aining, over to you. All right, Mr. Bonaman, thank you so much. So gone were the days where people would go to the library just to get a book to read. Some people would come home very sad because someone might have taken the book they wanted to read. People go to the library for research and all that. But is this the current situation of our libraries now? Do people still go to the library to get books to read, get books for research and many others? What is the current state of our library? Well, I cannot do the answering alone, so I have here with me the CEO himself, the Chief Executive for the Ghana Library Authority, Mr. Hayford Sian, to help us do the answering because he's the best person to talk to us, right? So this is still the In Focus segment right here on Joy Learning TV. Stay tuned. Hello, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And how are you? I'm fine. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Okay. So we'll go straight to our first question. What is the current state of our reading culture amongst the Ghanaian youth? What is the current state? Do we have people still going to the library to get books to read? I think um, to a large extent uh, we've done tremendously well at least over the last five years to be able to make sure that um, the things that were deterring people from accessing uh, public library services or library services in general you know, are addressed so that uh, these spaces become attractive for uh, the Ghanaian. I mean, I, it's not only for children. I mean, the perception is that it's only children <laughs> that uses the, the library. library. But, you know, we are a lifelong learning institution uh, that support right from the early grade level uh, or the even, even in some jurisdiction, even the unborn babies, you know, are donated with books by, by the public library institutions. Uh, you know, and so we have been working to be able to make sure that all age groups, all demographics, you know, are addressed uh, or knowledge is made available to this um, uh, to this group of people in our in our country. And so, uh, we have been working at addressing issues of books on the shelves of public libraries as to uh, the quantity of them um, and the relevance of it, and of course, age availability. And so, if you look at uh, 1981, when we had 36 libraries across the country, okay. books on the shelf was 1,049,000. Fast forward to 2016, 2017, we had increased the number of libraries by 25 to 61. Wow. But unfortunately, uh, books on the shelves of the public libraries across the country have reduced from 1,049,000 in 1981 to less than 400,000. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that is why for a very long time you could uh, here people often make the comment that oh, libraries are no more or there are only old books at the libraries, libraries or children are not reading any longer. But thank f thanks to His Excellency the President whose vision within the education sector you know, is anchored on the education strategic plan that has been developed for 2018 to 2030. Uh, the Ghana Library Authority for the first time has been given some responsibility. Okay. which is to be able to increase the number of libraries from the 61 as at 2017 uh, to uh, 540 by 2030. And so we have been working with this uh, education strategic plan to make sure that the number of, food pr uh, the number of libraries uh, increase. And we have done quite well as at today. Today, we have 114 libraries under our management within a period of five years. We've so added from 61 to 114. So we have added 53 libraries to the network of public libraries under our okay. management. We have increased the number of books on the shelves of uh, public libraries across the country from less than 400,000 to around 1.4 million books on the shelf of public. You talk about people, do the people still use, use the, the library? Yes. Um, as at 2017, our data says that about 370,000 people visited the public libraries across the country. Wow. Yes. So we still have people visiting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the data I'm giving to you for 2017. And guess how many people are visiting libraries uh, as of 2021, which is the, 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 last, the, year. the uh, last year. We had 1.2 million people visiting public libraries across the country, oh. which means that there are people who are benefiting from the resources. And the increase has been because 
there has been strategic investment in increasing the footprint of public libraries and also making sure that there are books on the shelves because you cannot, I mean, look at the number of books I, 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 I narrated to you. Because of the increase in the number of books, now people f f you know, find it more comfortable to be able to go because when they go, they can find the book that they need. Another thing we have done, which is also remarkable, has been to be able to create conducive environment at our various library spaces, which means other chairs for them to sit on, you know, because uh, in the past, you go and some chairs are broken down, the fun Sometimes is not working. Sometimes you have working. to wait outside for yes. someone to finish and exactly. then you go. Exactly. You know, I mean, we still record, you know, people standing outside and waiting because people are making use of the library. And they see, I mean, th there's a number, there's a limit to how uh, many can occupy right. the library yes. space uh, at a time. So this is really some of the interesting things that are happening. You know, the renovations that we've done, you know, working with Newmont, working with... Um, uh, the you know um, various partners like Bookade International or UNICEF to be able to make sure that our library spaces become attractive you know for the Ghanaian child so that when they get inside you know they feel comfortable the fun is working the light is working new books are available these are the things we have done which has helped us to be able to uh, get the increase in visit and use of our public libraries across the country. Okay, so um, we also heard that you are partnering with UNICEF yes. to make sure that you reach young people mm -hmm. more and mm -hmm. also improve the reading culture mm -hmm. amongst the youth. Yes. So can you tell us more about this project? Okay, so you see, if you look at the, the various age groups okay. and what type of knowledge do they need because we are knowledge institutions and our role is to connect the Ghanaian citizens to knowledge but it's not just every knowledge but relevant knowledge okay and so if you look at children at primary school you know they need to build vocabulary you know they need to read books that helps them to build the interest and the culture and the habits and the lifestyle of reading that age group is very critical now at junior high school level the concentration, junior high school, senior high school, the concentration has been how do I have access to plethora of knowledge so that I can be able to, at that moment, I have to pass my BEC exams, I have to pass my WASI exams. Within, do, with, within that age bracket, what kind of resources do they need so that they can be able to meet that educational objective that is required of them or that is the expectation of parents from their children? And so we curate resources for them. Now, university, again, say they are looking for if you're doing business, I mean you're looking for books on you know within yeah. this field of interest that you are studying. Now, after university, life starts to hit, and then you begin to ask yourself, what additional skills do I need to be able to become relevant so that a company looking to hire me uh, can I can be more attractive to companies. And so we are providing other avenues for you to gain other knowledge. So for example, we partner with Commonwealth of Learning to make available to us so that we can get Ghanaians on board a uh, massive open online course platform called the MOOCs. And so we did that. And now over 44,000 Ghanaians have benefited from taking courses in project management or taking courses in data analytics or user experience design mm -hmm. or some application development. These are skills, these are 21st century skills that every employer is looking forward to finding an employee. Yes, so it is not really your psychology or whatever that you learned in school, but what additional knowledge that makes you relevant to industry. And Ghana Library Authority, our role is to be able to connect these Ghanaian young people to those relevant resources. And so we work with UNICEF to create these spaces called the Youth Engagement Center spaces okay. that bring young people into the library spaces so that they can have access to some of these opportunities using the free internet and the free computers we've provided within the library okay. spaces. So that is one model that you know we've adopted working with uh, UNICEF. UNICEF within their program they call Generation Unlimited. I was part of the team that UNICEF organized globally to design that project in New York okay. and, and, and that's how come Ghana is also um, uh, benefiting from it. And so within that spaces we also think that knowledge does not only reside in the cloud or does not only reside in books but they are also sometimes in people. You know people thought leaders people have knowledge within them. 
And so bring these people also into the library space so that they can be able to interact with young people. And so, for example, we've gone around 10 of our centers across the country over the last four weeks where we brought in legal practitioners, seasoned legal practitioners, to educate young people on, on things that they need to know in, in, in starting the legal requirement in starting a business, running a business, sustaining a business, and growing a business. And so these legal practitioners came into the library spaces to download message to young people, oh, okay. as in teach young people, educate them to know, uh, uh, to know at first hand what is required of them. We brought in the office of the Registrar of Companies because people need to know the different registrations that exist when you want to be able to start a business and what type of business and the requirement and what kind of partners and stakeholders mm. are, have an interest in your business and which registration can be able to help. And so we work with the Office of the Register of Companies to bring their people, their resource people, into our bureau side. Then we also work with the Ghana Revenue Authority you know, because our work is to organize the people with the knowledge and connect them to the citizen. And so just like we are organizing books, we are organizing cloud uh, knowledge, we are also organizing human libraries. So I call them the <laughs> human libraries or the, or the human people. We brought them to the library space. And Ghana Revenue Authority took the opportunity to educate people on the incentives that even exist for young people when it comes to starting a business. Some wow. people did not know that, you know, as a young person, there are certain incentives for you. The location of your business comes with different tax obligations. And so we were able to get people, you know, educated. And for me, I mean, I was an entrepreneur, or I am always an entrepreneur. I have always been an entrepreneur, even before coming to the library. Right. So I used that opportunity to also uh, get young people also be inspired, you know, uh, in, the, in the area of entrepreneurship. And we undertook that project because Employment is key to the survival of this country. I mean, Definitely. our young people need to be able to uh, create their own business or become relevant for the job market. And that is why, you know, we needed to do this project to address the number one issue, which is unemployment. And we believe that to a large extent, uh, we've achieved that and we know that a lot of people are registering their business and starting business you know how, how people are preparing themselves to be able to become attractive for investors you know different fundraising methods that we thought you know that we were able to download or we taught people within these library spaces are being you know implemented okay so talking about this project who are your targets um people because mm. i'm sure you are not going to target all the ghanian youth at once no so which communities are you targeting for now so for now i mean f we did 10 so we did winneba we did cape coast we did takrade Sekendi area okay. we did kumasi we did tema we did accra we did kuforidia we did tamale we did wine we did bolgatanga uh, so the next phase uh, hopefully next year will be able to help us to drive sure. into the other regions. Okay, so now that the library has moved from um, its old state to yes. now going into the d uh, digitalized digital space, yeah. space yeah. are we going to say that um, with people in the village, mm. how are they also getting access to these libraries? Have you been because on TikTok recently? Yeah, I've been on TikTok. And you see how people in villages are now even on TikTok? Oh, but there are still some villages without oh, yeah, electricity but, but, yeah, and all but, that. Yes, but what I'm trying to say is that technology has become an enabler for us to be able to make sure that people, no matter their location in the country, we are able to read them resources. And so in 2019, okay. uh, the Ghana Library Authority developed an app called the Ghana Library app. And so if you go on your app store, your play store, you can be able to download the Ghana Library app. And once you begin to use it, your telcos are telling you that they support Ghana Library Authority. They support education. And for that reason, they are not going to charge you for data. And oh, so okay. in the village, people will have money to buy data to even do the talk. But what we are saying is that because we want to connect you to knowledge, your telco company, your MTN and your Vodafone, who cares so much about you, are telling you that want you to access knowledge for free. And so you can download the Ghana Library app and have access to it. And you don't have to pay for it like you are paying for TikTok videos. But what about those communities where people do not even have access to phones in a place? Yes, I mean, we understand that not everyone, not even in the most sophisticated and advanced yeah. country, will everybody be able to have <laughs> access to internet or, or phones. And so we have a mobile library van service, which won the UN Public Service Award for Innovation. Wow. And so the vans goes into the rural communities. Unfortunately, we do not have enough vans. 
uh, we have uh, 11 vans. I mean, the 11th van was donated. At the moment. At the moment. The 11th van was donated to us by SNIT under the able leadership of Dr. Okay. John Tenkran, the Director General of, of SNIT. And we have that van to, you know, support uh, our outreach in rural communities and, you know, and, and also to children who otherwise normally our static library will not be able to uh, reach them. And so these vans, you know, through Get Fund support, uh, in 2018, we managed to get them on the road because for a very long time, we didn't have any mobile library vans. When I took over at Ghana Library, all our vans were broken down. They were not functioning. But through support of Get Fund, led by Dr. Richard Ward, we managed uh, to uh, to get the vans back on the road, you know, refurbish them. And now they are really, you know, functional. And then the, so the that means they are fun. moving to the rural... They are moving into the rural communities. Okay. And the good news is that because we go to schools with our mobile vans a lot, we go to public schools with our mobile library van, we realize that when we go there, most of the schools also don't have access to technology. So we are teaching them ICT. Recently, some few years ago, you saw somebody drawing a keyboard on and the screen and all of that. And so, you know, the static library spaces do have computers. So when you go to a library, you find computers there. So yes. people that come to the library space have access to books. They have access to computers. also computers. But when the mobile vans, goes into the communities. They were only sending books there. We work with Ghana Investment Fund for Electronic Communication, you know, and they gave us computers. So now... So now we have computers in the van, van as well as books. Books. Wow. And so the van moves into the schools with computers and vans. So the ICT teacher, for the first time, <laughs> is able to have access to some computer, 10 laptops and able to bring it to the classroom. Now is able to do demonstration to the kids. The kids are able to touch, touch the keyboard. And this was what you know the United Nations Public Service Award uh, recognized the Ghana Library Authority as wow. one of the 10 organizations in the world for innovation. Congratulations. Uh, you know, uh, thank you very much. And so those are the things that uh, we have done to be able to drive inclusion. You know, so that people are not left out. And that is where Definitely. you are very passionate. I know you are very passionate yes. about how do we include people <laughs> who don't have access to internet, who don't have access to electricity. And so that's our, our little effort that we are working to be able to, um, you know, uh, help um, everyone. But, I mean, the best case scenario is that every district in Ghana will have a proper functioning central library with a plethora of footprint of smaller libraries, with a few mobile library vans traveling all over the villages, making sure that resources are available. And I believe that working with different stakeholders uh, like your, your very good channel, you know, we should be able to advocate and be able to support you know, effort in that direction. That's why always I singled out the effort within the Futu municipality by Honorable Afrinio Markin, who has built over 10 libraries over 10 libraries in, in this constituency wow. that we are able to reach a lot more children. I mean, we reach a lot more children in Afutu than any part of this country oh, because gee. we have quite a number of libraries, libraries in That's there to be able for the benefit of the children. Okay. So are there any challenges you face? Just like every institution <laughs> in Ghana, the Ghana as a county, <laughs> Ghana Incorporated or Ghana Limited <laughs> has a problem. Ghana's problem is that we have what uh, uh, we don't have enough money, right? Yeah. So Ghana, as a country, is not able to generate enough money <laughs> to be able to meet its demands. Same with the library authority. You know, I wish I'm able to, you know, employ a lot more people if I have the resources so that I can be able to expand my footprint rapidly, like the way I want. You don't have enough. I mean, technology penetration in Ghana is still, uh, you know, very slow, and so it affects the delivery of public library services and all of that. And so these are really um, challenges that cut across all institutions in Ghana. Okay. So um, looking at um, the upcoming years, how do you intend, what are your plans to expand the network of libraries in Ghana? So um, since 2018, I mean, the Library Authority, working with its governing board led by Dr. Helena Hassana Samoa, you know, has been working on implementing Ghana's vision within the education strategic plan, which is 540 libraries. And so the approach has been, let's work with metropolitan and municipal assemblies, okay. let's work with members of parliament, let's work with corporate institutions, let's work with uh, philanthropists who are willing to be able to help us to be able to increase the footprint. And that is exactly what we have been. So <laughs> the 53 libraries, Her Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic, has built about 10 of them. Honorable Afanyo Mark and about 10 of them. 
other individuals and other municipalities have all contributed to increasing the number of uh, libraries across the country. And so we will be working on that because government alone cannot do that. And so that mm -hmm. collaboration, that effort of joint investment, we will you know, continue to, to, to uh, work around it. Of course, increasing the number of footprint also means that a lot more people are going to be offered job opportunities to work with the library and contribute to knowledge and learning of Ghanaian children. And so, um, I mean, that's why over the last at least five years, we've added over uh, 150 people to the to, to the workforce of Ghana Library Authority. Oh, yes. We do anticipate that in 2020, 2023, all things being equal, economic stability and all of that, we can be able to add mm -hmm. more, you know, people. Of course, we expect to increase the books on the shelves of public libraries in the country. The book to population ratio is bad. I mean, I'm telling you, 1.4 million books on the shelf of public libraries in Ghana with um, um, for 30 million people. When you go to Finland, okay, internet penetration is around 99%. There is less than 6 million people in Finland. But guess the number of libraries in Finland? Over 700 libraries are in Finland. Within every three kilometer radius, about you can find about 70% of their public library network. And that is exactly the kind of thing we want to see in Ghana. So we need to invest a lot more in books, support local publication of materials uh, that we've organized workshops around it for, for, for writers in Ghana. We will continue to advocate and do more in that direction. We also, of course, will be working more on, you know, expanding uh, the resources on our digital uh, platforms. I mean, okay. if you go on our digital platform, yes, we have done well. We have over 13,000 audio books. We have over 6,000 books. We have, you know, a lot of about over 1,000 uh, tutorial videos uh, by Ghana Education Service on the platform being hosted and being viewed by Ghanaian children. We do hope to be able to increase that resources on, on the platform. We also intend that more resources can also be put on for the tertiary sector because we don't have a lot of tertiary uh, research resources on the platform. We do hope to be able to expand that so that we can become the one-stop shop when it comes to uh, getting digital uh, content you know, for, for, for lifelong learning activities. Okay, so any final words for our uh, Well, the final word is that um, Ghana Library Authority Board and Management have been working uh, very hard to make sure that we increase the number of footprint, we make sure that books are on the shelf of public library, uh, working with different partners and different stakeholders. We've invested a lot already. Our mobile library vans are moving into schools and villages across the country. All we can ask for is for you to make optimum use of the resources that we are making available because without your patronage, uh, there is very little we can be able to uh, accomplish and already we are grateful for your support. I mean, 2017 recording uh, about 370,000 visits to now over 1.2 million visits across the country at our various public libraries. We do hope that we can be able to do more and be able to reach, you know, uh, next year 2023 when I get the opportunity to, to have another interview. I could be mentioned over 2 million, 3 million people that are making use of our public libraries across the country. And it is you who can be able to make, uh, uh, make us achieve that target. We encourage parents that make use, you know, go online, look for the nearest branch of our public library, go to library.gov.gh. You can download our app uh, at Play Store or uh, App Store. Um, uh, just search Ghana Library. We will be there. You will find also our branches also on the app. Uh, visit the nearest library location and get a library card number. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are hoping by 2030, the library uh, books will increase. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> and they are getting your targets. Too. Definitely, definitely. All right, wishing you the best. Thank you very much. All right, so that will be all for this week's InfoCourse segment right here on Joy Learning TV. We had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the CEO for Ghana Library Authority, Mr. Hayford Siang. He has told us more, all that we need to know about the uh, Ghana Library, what our libraries are doing at the moment, what the Ghana Library Authority is doing at the moment, what um, the reading culture of our youth and all that. And I believe you've learned a lot. So you at home, especially students at home, can go to the library. There are books there. All you have to do is to just go to the library. And if you don't want to go to the library, you can as well go to Play Store, the Apple Play Store, and then you can download the library app and then you can get access to every book that you are needing 
for your research works and other things. So that will be all for today's In Focus segment. My name is Irene Edubia Ainin. Keep watching Joy Learning TV. As we always say, Joy Learning, keep learning. Thank you so much, Irene Aining. Now, let's move to some updates we have for you on Joy Learning TV. This week on Joy Learning, basic classroom lessons are from Monday to Friday at 4.30 p.m. with a repeat at 6 o'clock a.m. Monday, basic 4, maths, comparing of numbers up to 100,000. Tuesday, basic 5, English language noun types. Wednesday, basic 6, maths, rounding numbers. Thursday, Basic 4, Science, Organs of the Digestive System and Their Functions. Friday, Basic 5, ICT, Microsoft Windows Desktop Part 3. JHS1 lessons are from Monday to Friday at 3.30 p.m. with a repeat at 6.30 a.m. Monday, French. Tuesday, Social Studies, Environment. Wednesday, Mathematics, Mental Mathematics Strategies. Thursday, English language, pronouns and their types. Friday, RME, religious practices, Islamic worship. JHS2 lessons are from Monday to Friday at 5 o'clock p.m. with a repeat at 11.30 a.m. Monday, French. Tuesday, RME, immorality. Wednesday, ICT, storage devices. Thursday, maths, linear equations, part one. Friday, integrated science, food and nutrition, part two. JHS3 Revision Show is on Monday to Friday at 6 o'clock p.m. with a repeat at 12.30 p.m. Monday, Social Studies, Managing Our Finance. Tuesday, English Language, Comprehension. Wednesday, RME, Commitment to Friends and Work. Thursday, English, Literature, Appreciating Poetry. Friday, Integrated Science, Acid, Base and Soul. SHS 1 new lessons are from Monday to Friday at 1.30 p.m. with a repeat at 8.30 a.m. Monday, cost accounting, payroll accounting. Tuesday, financial accounting, principle of double entry. Wednesday, government, judiciary. Thursday, elective maths, statistics. Friday, biology, kingdom animalia. SHS 2 lessons are from Monday to Friday at 2.30 a.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. Monday, Financial Accounting, Depreciation of Non-Current Assets, Part 1. Tuesday, Elective Maths, Mattresses 1, Determinants and Invest. Wednesday, Biology. Thursday, Financial Accounting, Depreciation of Non-Current Assets, Part 2. Friday, Cost Accounting, Break-Even Analysis, Graphical Approach. SHS3 Revision Show is on Monday to Friday at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 9.30 a.m. Monday, Government, Elections. Tuesday, Biology, Mammalia Anatomy and Physiology. Wednesday, Financial Accounting, Bank Reconciliation. Thursday, Business Management, Human Resource Management Recruitment. Friday, History, Civilization of the Kingdom of Axum and Ethiopia. For more videos on our lessons, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Joy Learning TV. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Joy Learning TV and on Instagram at Official Joy Learning TV. Joy Learning at 2, keeping the promise, growing the audience. Joy Learning, keep learning. <laughs>
Joy Learning is giving you the opportunity to send heartwarming wishes to celebrate your friends, family, and loved ones on the GL birthday wish. It's time to wish your loved ones well on that special occasion. Is it the birthday or anniversary of your child, friend, classmate, your schoolmate, your teacher, or non-teaching staff of your school? The all-new JL Birthday Wish by Ghana's number one educational TV channel hits your regular classroom screen. And as usual, it is time for Jack to play and have fun. It has been made easy for you and this is how. Send a picture of your loved ones. Add their names, school, and location, and a heartwarming birthday Day message and finally follow us on official joy learning tv on instagram like the jl birthday wish post and tag five friends send it to our whatsapp line 0247-108-738 and voila your birthday wish will be aired on joy learning tv and all our social media platforms learning is made fun with the jl birthday wish joy learning keep learning This is how we draw down the curtain on this week's edition of Edu News 360. Make a date with us same time next week. Till then, do enjoy the rest of our programs. My name is Pakwesi Barnaman.